I don't know. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, but I can only hope for the best. Uh, my name is Brittany CV. I'm my title. The most awesome person in the world. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it says I'm an instructor. I'm a second degree instructor. It's taken me 23 years to, to get here. And it was very interesting to go from the student to the, the dedicated teacher. Ryan, he reminds me of like John Wayne in the military movies. Like today in class, he was like falling, and I had to like stifle a laugh. He pays like, real close attention to me, tries. Summer was 12, but she looks 14. But then I was like thinking, I was like, well, I was 12, and I tested for my black dollars. I kind of get it. And then Sophie, she doesn't need to be led. She needs to like do it herself, but it's really scary. She has to be intense. It was like she has to like really represent this well. Just, just yell, <laughs> just yell, <laughs> you know. I just want them to be able to just know somebody punches at you and this is how you respond, vice versa. <laughs> if somebody grabs you this way, this is how you respond. <clears throat> and I want them to be able to quickly bam, 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 not be able to think about it. I'm running into some, some learning curves uh, on how to motivate people to be intense. Some people have a really it really just comes naturally, mostly guys. I think it might be society just being like, you have to be Rambo. <laughs> you know, you have to be John Wayne. You know, and girls are like, you're, it's okay if you're Barbie, you know, kind of stuff. Everybody has their sticking points where they're like, I just can't get number 24. Like, if I can call out a number between 1 and 30, I should be able to do it immediately. That's my intent, uh, or that's my goal, rather. see how far you can like jump and roll just so if you have to do it it's not the first time so if they ask me to jump over a chair and they're like any bluebells want to do it my expectation <laughs> right is that you can do it i kind of show how i'm like Especially with like so rolling. When I first came here and I saw her roll, I was like, oh my gosh. This is kind of embarrassing. Like, we need work on this. And so I, I was like, we are gonna work on rolling. And, I, and we did, and she got really good. And that was within like, what, two or three? Three weekends? Did she get a long way? That's literally half of what that is. So you can go home with two people. So high school and college teach you that cramming is a viable option. Life teaches you that it's not. And so if you didn't know it like a month out, the chances of you knowing it or learning it are going to be very nil. Was our eighth form, what we call a pan odon. He kept messing up at this one part. He did everything else amazing. He broke all of his boards, broke his cinder block, was an amazing spar, but he still failed his test because he couldn't get his form mm -hmm. right now. So I'm like, you gotta be perfect because you don't have that intensity. And he still failed because he messed up one. super stressed, like beyond stressed, that I'm calm somehow, but I'm super stressed because it's in one week and I'm not ready. Ooh, <laughs> where do I begin with this one? Feeling good. I'm feeling good, but uh, I'm feeling a little bit un unprepared. Dad always says, when somebody asks me if I'm ready, I just say, I'm prepared, I'm never ready. I'm not. I'm like, I feel like I'm not ready. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to... See what I got. I'm just really nervous that I won't pass and everything. I mean, I, I know just now I just said it, I'm feeling unprepared, but... I feel like I'll mess up even more. I'm pretty in the middle. That's my main stress about it, is just 
me overstressing about not passing. Hopefully practice more, get enough sleep, drink enough water to be hydrated, and yeah. Well, I'm confident, but I, there's still that nervousness of being like, well, something could happen. being around new people and I'm kind of uncomfortable around new people. I just had to think that if I got through this, it, I would be okay. So I just like focused where my technique was and where the punch was supposed to be, where the kick was supposed to be. But I really want to see them like just like get in the zone and just kind of like just be like ride or die. <laughs> I felt like if I did one little thing wrong, they would see the judges. We're just doing Sipsu, one of my favorite forms. I competed at Worlds with it. But when I landed, I just clashed. I felt like my, my kneecap kind of like popped out and popped in, and it hurt. I remember my eyes were closed, and I could feel people grab me, and I was like, get off of me, I can do it. And so, <laughs> Because I'm so determined, I'm stupid. Like, it just, it's just stupid. <laughs> yeah. I told the girls, like, hey, be real careful. But then it happened to me, so I kind of had to eat my words. Like, it was like a freak accident. Like, it was just kind of like, what's wrong with my life? And so I was like, give me a brace, I'm fine, I'm fine. And so they gave me this brace, and it was like kind of like the wrong one. So I was like, in front of everybody, it was really quiet. I got this. I'm not just trying to get into this. All about the door. Go slow. I just twisted ever so slightly. Yeah. It was just really loud. Pop. <laughs> it felt like, again, like my kneecap, like, kind of came out and went back in. But that's when I realized, like, maybe my body is giving out on me. No matter how bad I want it, I can't, I can't go on. So they told me, like, I'm done. Not, I wasn't sulking, but I was, like, really processing, like, hey, I might have, like, really hurt myself. During sparring, I got kicked really hard in the solar plexus, and unfortunately they saw it because I was right in front of them, so that hurt, and that kind of made me realize I need to work on my sparring, but it was hard for me because I'm not best at being physically fit. And so I was kind of dying near the end. I didn't see that any mistakes, they, they kept going. They had to do a, a roll that we'd never done before, and they, did, they all did it. So yeah, they did really well. So. My mom was like, it wasn't meant to be. And I'm like, so you're basically telling me the year of my life that I dedicated to this was for nothing. I didn't tell her that, because I'm a good daughter. Actually, I had the surgery like two weeks ago today. I don't like being a burden, you know, like a cornered ravenous dog. Like, don't bother me, I'm good. I can't actually move, but I'm fine, <laughs> you know. This made me realize people with like permanent handicap, I guess really hard. Kind of pretty good. Thank you. Thanks for the something.